Okay, she's filled out the form. Thank you. It doesn't, doesn't look like you have any contraindications. I see a little bit of stomach problems here. Would you like a castor oil pad? Yes. Great. Well, uh, let me see. Do you need to use the restroom first? Uh, yes. No? Okay, let me show you to your room. Okay, follow me this way, please. This is what we'll be working today. If you would, put your head at this end of the table. Undress. You can leave your underwear on. And you can put your clothes right there on that chair. Okay. When you're underneath the sheet, be sure that your knees go over the bolster so that you're lying on your back. Do you have any questions? Okay, while you're getting ready, I'll go get a castor oil pad for you. Thank you. Okay. While the client's getting ready, I'm going to get a castor oil pack ready. We keep the castor oil packs in the cabinet. And the hydroculator steam packs in here. Be careful because the water gets very, very hot. 165 degrees. And I'm also going to wash my hands. We start with hot water, and when we finish the massage, we always wash our hands with cold water. And if you've had anything that's spicy to eat, always check your breast, and we have scope available for you, too. Already? Yes. Now, since this is your first massage, um, let me know if you'd like a light massage, deep massage, invigorating, relaxing. Um, you don't know? I don't know since this is the first time I've been here, okay. but... Okay, what is the purpose for your massage today? Just to relax or rejuvenate? Get ready for a sports event? Why? Uh, just relaxing. Do you have any questions for me before we begin? What do you want me to do? Let me do. Okay, just lay there and let me know if I ever go too deep or too light. Okay. okay. Give me uh, comments through the massage if you're uncomfortable at any point. Or if I take a stretch too far, or anything like that. This should be very comfortable for you. Nothing should feel bad, only feel good. Okay? And the castor oil pack is very stimulating for the assimilations and eliminations. And also tell me if the heat gets too hot at any point, I'll just flip it around. Okay, okay? in about five minutes it may do that. Have you had any recent broken bones or problems, illnesses, injuries, on any medications? No? Okay. Feel pretty comfortable? Yes, thank you. Okay. Not pregnant, are you? No. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start right here. If you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to ask. Close your eyes and relax. And start with the effleurage. At this point, I try not to lose contact at any point. Marlene, I'm going to move your hair over just a little bit because I don't want to get it oily for you today. Okay. doing a flourage to relax and get into the rhythm. You can continue with the arm or start with the hand. Your option, whatever you feel like would be most beneficial. Friction at the wrist at a stretch. And friction for the flexors at a stretch. Okay, spread the hand. There's a few acupressure points you should be aware of here. The first one is the great eliminator, large intestine 4, LI4. That's good for many, many things, coughs, colds, flus, fevers, any eliminations. 
and there's another one right here called stomach three or small intestine three. It's good for neck, low back, hand pain, deafness. Okay. Pericardium six is right here. And pericardium six is good for gas, nausea, seasickness, and heart palpitation. One other one you should know is lung seven. That's underneath this bone right here. And lung seven is good for headache, toothache, neck pain, and coughs. Okay. Press in for the joint movement, rotations. Tuck out. You can do little circles or squeeze and twist. Press in. Rotate full range of motion. And tug. How's this pressure so far? Very good. During the beginning of the massage, if you haven't centered yourself, it's a good time to do so now. Take some slow, deep breaths. Ask the client to take some slow, deep breaths. Just to be at peace and centered so that you can be with them. Okay. This is a one-handed kneading. This is a friction. Okay. Put the arm over the body to do more frictions at the elbow. Okay, a kneading for the forearm. And actually frictioning at the deltoid at this point is a wonderful time to do it. And don't ever forget the bicipital groove. Triceps and underneath, and I'm working longitudinally along the rhomboids. And next, I'm going to friction the rhomboids from this position. Be extra cautious of your body posture at this point, making sure your back is nice and straight and you're in the squat position. And take this move a little bit further and press into the rhomboids with your fingertips and move the arm around. And next I'm going to stretch the rhomboids. Okay, I'm going to walk around to the other side of the table without losing contact. And stretch over as far as she can comfortably go. People love this move. And without losing the traction, get close to the head, add a little bit extra oil. This is an optional move. I would not do this on someone that was not really comfortable with me because right now I'm pressing in on the quadratus lumborum and pulling up. I'm going down the back to the low back and pulling up. This is also a wonderful position to work the pecs. And again, do this only with people that will feel very comfortable with you because some people get very sensitive in this area with the breast tissue. Is that okay? Does that hurt at all? Good flexibility there. That's full range of motion. If you run out of room, you can always finish the joint rotation of the shoulder with the elbow bent. Effleurage always after joint movement. There's also an acupressure point, two of them right in here, called large intestine 11 and large intestine 12. Those points are good for hypertension, fever, colds, shoulder and neck pain. Did any, any of these hurt? No, not. Not too bad? Hurt. A little bit? 
large intestine 15 is right here at the top of the middle deltoid. And large intestine 15 is good for shoulder and arm pain. Okay. Finish up here and your option to go to the neck or to the other arm. I'm going to go right on over to the other arm and go through this arm. Deep longitudinal, pressing in the acupressure points, LI11, LI12, one-handed kneading, friction extensors, friction deflexors, squeeze the hand out. I'm moving this one a little bit faster like it should normally be done in a massage. Stress points here, here, and here are very common in massage therapists. Small intestine three, large intestine four. The shiatsu move, the finger flicking is optional. I'll show you one of those. Pull, 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 flick. Pull, 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 flick. And that's more for an invigorating massage. You wouldn't want to do this if they're just in to relax. Friction. Friction, kneading. And friction. Rhomboids. And friction. Working this one across the shoulders. an acupressure point right in here called gallbladder 21. It's as if you grab the upper trapezius and bent it. Gallbladder 21 is good for low or hyperthyroid, headaches, neck and shoulder pain. How's that one feel for you? A little, a little, little sensitive? Yeah. Tricep stretch. And down. I'm going to come back up and do a little pec work for her because this area seems to be a little tight. Did you notice that too? And for the pec work, I'm working friction across the clavicle. Bicipital groove and moving the pec major again. You'll find the pec liner down in here. Does that hurt at all? It's a little tight. Yeah? Okay. Seems tight. Right there. This is what I do for <laughs> Good for you. That's great. And since this arm was a little tense, I felt the tension in this arm. I'm going to rock it out. Pulling. And a flourish. Okay. Let's start with the neck. Now 
just because I started with the right arm does not mean that you have to start with the right arm. Some people prefer starting the massage on the face and the neck because there's no oil on your hands at that point and you're less likely to get oil on the face and in the hair. So that's the effrage. Move myself back over this way. Do a one hand in kneading. One hand is folding. Deep longitudinal to friction at the skull. Our head moved a little bit in a rotation, so I'm going to straighten that out because I just want her in a lateral stretch, which is ear to shoulder. And as I do the deep longitudinal, I am going across that acupressure point gallbladder 21 right here. And then I'm moving right on up to an acupressure point called gallbladder 20. Gallbladder or GB20 is good for attention, thyroid, sinus problems, especially sinus drainage, migraines, neck and shoulder pain. Excellent point to do. Okay. Friction for trapezius, and I'm getting some scalene as I work up and through here. How's my pressure? Very good. Okay. You finish up with a little vibration for this side, because she's tight right in here. And since I haven't worked this clavicle yet, I'm going to go across here, across the deltoids, and move her head into a lateral stretch. One-handed kneading. One-handed folding. Deep longitudinal from the acromion process to the skull. Working those acupressure points. Gallbladder 21 and gallbladder 20. A little tight right there. That's a little typical. And some more vibration. Okay. That's two sides of the neck. Next, I'm going to do the back of the neck. Watch your posture on here. You do have an option of sitting in a chair. Friction at the skull, at the mastoid process. And back where the muscles meet the skull. Same thing for the other side. scaling lift and you just cross fibering the scalings at this point it's just like a lift and they fall underneath your fingers working up the lamina groove with your thumb and forefinger and again posture is really important to make sure that your arm is on the table for this so that your forefinger and your thumb are going into the lamina groove in between the transverse and the spinous processes. Okay, 
then we're ready for the occipital release. And again, posture is very important for this. Get the fingertips pointing towards the eyes. Be sure that the chin is up higher than the forehead and ask them to take slow, deep breaths. And as they ex exhale, you should see their forehead falling down farther and farther. Your goal is to keep your fingertips pointing towards their eyes. And your release is finished when their head is resting comfortably on your palms. For some people, it may take uh, three to five minutes. Other people, if they've had a lot of body work, will just fall right into it. There is an optional move for rocking back so that the whole body rocks with just two or three pounds of pressure on the occiput. You're also pressing in on gall or gallbladder 20 at this area too, next to the skull. There's another area right up ab about an inch above the occipital on the bone, occiput, that's a good place to friction because the splenus capitis inserts there. I'm going to start the face massage. Okay, I don't put any excess oil on my hands at all. Okay. Press in with your fingertips and move out. In, spread out underneath the mandible. Press, circle the mandible. You can actually feel the gum line right in there. Move on up the masseter. Right in here now where the masseter meets the zygomatic, right in front of the little ear flap is where you'll find the temporal mandibular joint. And where that joint is, is also an acupressure point called gallbladder 2. And that is wonderful for earaches, toothaches, TMJ problems, and headaches. From here, I'm going to go over to an acupressure point called large intestine 20, LI20. And LI20 is good for many different things, including sinuses, rhinitis, and facial paralysis, sinus headaches. Move that on over underneath the zygomatic till I run into the masseter. And that point is stomach 7, ST7. ST7 is good for toothaches, TMJ, sinus problems, and headaches also. And make it a nice, smooth sweep. And I'm going to work up the bridge of the nose to two acupressure points called bladder 1, which is in, and bladder 2, which is up. And these acupressure points are good for sinus headaches, headaches in general, and eye strain. Press in and up. Bring the forehead down to the finger. Like this. Squeezing down. You're going across another acupressure point called gallbladder one. And this is especially good for migraine headaches, GB1. Also good for TMJ. Press and circle into the hairline. Fingertips. You can do a frictioning move across the forehead. Skin rolling. Skin rolling is a twina move, Chinese medical massage for migraine and regular headaches. Press and circle the ear. And this is with some pressure here. You don't have any bones. It's just cartilage in here. So don't be afraid of going deep. People either love or hate the ear massage. I'm going to move on up to a couple of important acupressure points. This is governing vessel 24.5. It's wonderful for frontal headaches. This area is also known as the third eye. Governing vessel 
24 is right here. 24.5 and 24. I'm going to work through the skull and through the forehead with a knuckle roll. This comes from myotherapy, and it's a wonderful way to get pretty deep inside all the sinuses, all these little notches that the skull has. You can work all the way through with this like this. I'm going to do a line of acupressure points down the governing vessel to the occiput. Then there's also another line from the crown to the ears. Optional move is squeezing the hair. How does that feel to you? Feels you really like good. it? Yeah. Alright. Uh, there's a few acupressure points right in here. This is called lung two, then you have lung one right here, about an inch below that. And lung one and two are good for any kind of lung problems, asthmas, colds, coughs, hay fever, congestion in the lungs. Finishing up with this area, some nice strokes to say goodbye. And I'm going to move down to take off the castor oil pack. How was the heat? Did it get too bad? No, it's good. Okay. Be sure to hold the, the, the brass towel here as you pull the sheet down. And since it's nice and gooey, this is one time you're allowed to lose contact go over and get some tissues, something to wipe off the castor oil. You cannot massage with castor oil, it's way too messy. And you see the hyperemia that the steam heat pack caused, that's just fine, it's very normal. Start with the stomach massage. You do the stomach massage very slowly. Start with a half of a ringing with a little bit of a lift at the waistline. Then you can move that lift into the rib twist and the hip twist. As you can see, I can get a lot more motion there. I'm going to repeat this process on the other side. Rib twist and hip twist. I'm going to do a lumbar lift now with the rock. You should not do a stomach massage or a castor oil pack on anybody that's eaten recently. These other circles always done in a clockwise direction. And skip over that area. You don't want to circle in on the bladder, causing them to go to the bathroom. Circle down. How's my pressure on this? Be cautious of your pressure because one thing that can be very uncomfortable is doing it too deep. After the clockwise circles, working especially with the large intestine, you can also work little circles with the small intestine. Okay. I'm going to do the tandem points. Um, right here you will find an acupressure point called tandem or conception vessel five and a balancing point. I'm going to press and circle down until I feel a pulse. Being fully aware at all times if I'm going too deep by watching her face and now the pulse is starting to come up. You may have to wait a few minutes or a few moments for the pulse to rise. 
release slowly. Press into the rib cage. Take a deep breath for me and exhale and give it a pull down again. And the other side. In. This side's a little constricted. I'm not able to get as deep on this side. This is working with the diaphragm, so I'm going to vibrate this. Take a deep breath and exhale. Again. Exhale. some acupressure points right next to the ASIS. I'm going to feel through the sheet for the anterior superior iliac spine. Press towards it. These acupressure points are good for menstrual problems in ladies and prostate problems in gentlemen. And that doesn't seem to be too restricted right now. And, and then pressing same acupressure area and in is wonderful for constipation. And next I'm going to finish up with what we call the rocking the hara. It's done very slow. Your hands become like waves. Sometimes I'll check the ileocecal valve if I feel a little stoppage in the stomach or the colon area. You find that by pressing into the belly button, ASIS, and right where the two lines connect, you'll find the ileocecal valve, and I'll press it in a circle. Marlene's feels fine. It doesn't feel blocked. So, okay. I'll finish up by saying a goodbye move. And now we're down to the leg. Are you cool at all? No? Okay. About three squirts of oil and a barrage. Deeper each time you go up. Always light back. I'm going to start with the petrissage moves. This is a bicycling move. It's like a big chucking. This is a little chucking. Pulling move. I'm going to do that. Let me know if I go too deep. Afraid to move the leg around a little bit when you're kneading. Again, making sure that you're squatting as you're doing the moves. And this is a good area to do a ringing. You don't want to move the ringing down to the uh, tibia area because the bone gets in the way. Next, a couple of areas to friction at the thigh is the origin the rectus femoris right here and you can always find that by the bottom of the ASIS right here and come down and friction the top of the knee the ligaments between the kneecap patella inferior patellar tendon this one was a superior patellar tendon A couple of acupressure points. Right now I'm frictioning the tibialis anterior and posterior by going up and down with my thumbs and my fingers. Okay. First acupressure point is next to the tibia, where the tibia runs into this area. And this is stomach 36. Stomach 36 is good for headaches, lumbar pain, weakness, and nausea. The next one, we're just going to go down to the side of that, next to the uh, origin of the peroneus longus. 
And this one is called gallbladder 34. It's good for gallbladder disease, lumbar pain, knee pain, vertigo. Okay, then about center from there, I'm doing gallbladder 36 for leg, knee, lumbar pain, and dizziness. Did any of those points hurt? Good. Next, I'm going to focus in on a point called bladder 60, which is behind the ankle. Bladder 60 is good for low back pain, ankle pain, headache, and sciatica. On the inside of the leg is spleen 6. One hand's width of hers into the bone right there. And spleen 6 is good for reproductive and spleen problems and headaches. And good for the same thing as spleen 10, which you'll find up the line above the knee. Now, I'm going to start with reflexology. I'll do about four or five minutes of reflexology, starting with the shaking, making sure that the leg is moving. Okay, bicycling, moving the bones, inner spine twist. Ankle joint movement, full range of motion, pressing in. Tug, squeeze the heel, hold the heel, go down the vertebrae of the foot. Pressing in on the heel, this is the lumbar area. Toe joint movements. Work down the sides of the toes. Press in, rotate, pull. Press in, rotate, pull. Okay. You have another acupressure point right here. Liver three, LIV three, good for headaches, dizziness, foot pain, and breast pain. That's a good point to press, and sometimes that's sore. Marlene, was that sore on you? Good. Okay. Stretching the toes back, stretching the toes forward. Okay. Five lines of five. Working around the thyroid bronchial area. Her lung, too, was a little sore, so I'm going to give some extra attention to the lung area right in here. Knuckles. Hook and pull, pituitary. And inchworm, sinus points. Supporting the toes, holding them still while I work it. Pull back and inchworm the eyes and ear area. Down shoulders. Okay, thumb sweeps to let me know if there's any uric or lactic acid I'm running across. Uric and lactic acid feel, the uric feels crunchy, the lactic feels hard. Colon area down here, above the waistline, liver and gallbladder because I'm working on her right foot. Crusty. Finger walking. Lymphatic drainage and friction around the ankle. Pinching side of the foot. This feels good. And pinching the sides of the foot. Pinkies between the toes. Some people like this, some people do not. So be sure to ask them if they like it.
squeezing the part. You can do some percussion. Look for any redness. That's pretty good. And that's all I'm going to do for the foot for right now. I'm going to move back up the leg and get ready for the joint movement. Support the heel with your hand. Bring the leg up slowly. While you do that, pull the draping over to the side. So move this hand down here. And slowly press up. Hold when you feel the resistance. Now I'm going to take it over to the other side. That was a low back stretch. This is a stretch for the glutes and the piriformis. While it's in this position, I'm going to work the heel of my hand into the piriformis, making sure that I don't go too far because this will increase the flexibility of these hip muscles. Now I'm going to hold the draping with this hand as I very slowly move the leg out. Okay. And for the adductors, forearm work works really good. It feels much better than hand work. Arm saw, arm effleurage. Now I'm going to do the figure four, which is the joint movement for the hip. And Marley, would you please hold this for me? Those two together, thank you. Now always maintain control by holding the heel of the foot. Do the first couple very slow, getting full range of motion, just like you did in the stretches. And then the next few, you can really whip it. And this is really getting the hip joint nice and lubricated with a synovial fluid. Okay. Take back control of the leg. I'll take the sheet. Bring the sheet down with the leg so that it's one nice smooth movement. Always effleurage after joint movement. I'm ending with a feather stroke or nerve stroke, it's also called. I'm going to go through the other leg quickly and see if you can name the different moves. Pressure point, stomach 36, gallbladder 34, gallbladder 36, spleen 6, spleen 10, bladder 
taking the vertebrae. Finger walking, lymphatic drainage, and arching around the ankle. Side, heel squeeze, toe joint movements. Circling the thyroid bronchial area and inchworm across the sinuses, eyes and ears area. Thumb sweeps to look for crunchies, which are uric acid, or hard places, lactic. this one with the shaking. Okay. A farage. I'm going to start the joint movement. If you're not sure what their flexibility is and you're not real secure with your feeling, then ask them. Don't be afraid to ask them. It's better to ask them to go too far with these stretches. And this one is a stretch for the hip, glutes, and piriformis. And again, in this position, a little friction. I work at the head of the femur. And she seems to be able to take the deep work, so I'm going in with my knuckles. Sometimes, for some people, this may be too much. You've got to fill that one out. And that increases her flexibility by a couple inches. her to hold the sheets together. That's You don't have to, if you've got your draping down really well and don't think you'll lose anything, you don't have to ask them to hold it or just do the joint movement very slowly and then you can grab it yourself. But until you get really adapted to the draping, please stay on the secure side. After you've been doing many massages, you won't need to have the client hold the sheet. turn over, so give yourself a nice big stretch while I put the face cradle in. Okay. Still comfortable? Alright. Tent the sheet like this so that nothing can be exposed. Alright, you scoot up please and I'll put the bolster back underneath your ankle. Would you like some peppermint oil to smell while your head is in the face cradle? Yeah, thank you. Okay. I would not use the face cradle or have them going in a prone position like this if they had sinus problems, a headache, uh, were very large chested or big bellied. I would go sideline technique for those people. Okay. Tuck it into the 
underwear, about three squirts of oil, and flourage. doing behind the knee cap. Deep longitudinal with the knuckles. And kneading. some forearm work. Forearm effleurage around the head of the femur and arm saw. You take the arm saw into the hip. Now we're ready to friction. Now we want to friction the Achilles tendon at a stretch either with the hand saw or the fingers. Doing a deep longitudinal at a stretch. That feels pretty good. So squeeze, friction where the Achilles tendon meets the gastrox. And now friction the hamstring tendons. While I have the leg moving back and forth, I'm going to swing it out, holding the sheet with me so that I can work around the tensor fascia latte and the iliotibial band really good. Squeezing it and then frictioning again at the head of the femur. Real important area to work. Pressing in to piriformis. Right here is an acupressure point called gallbladder 30. Good for all sciatica, hip pain, leg pain, low back pain. And from the side view, gallbladder 34 and gallbladder 36 and bladder 60. And leg back straight. Bladder 40 is behind the knee. I'm going to do a knee hold for that. Hold. I'll do this for a few moments. Then if they have leg pain, I will go in with about 5 to 10 pounds of pressure with my thumb. Going to friction the ischial tuberosity with my elbow. It's the bone that you sit on. And I'm going to give her a nice stretch for the legs by the elbow pushing against the ischial tuberosity and pushing the heel towards the wall. Okay. Okay. Afflorage. Friction. Say goodbye. Now I'm going to quickly go over that with the other leg. Tuck into the same leg, please. Three squares of oil. Flourage. Checking. Body weight down. Kneading. Longitudinal. Forearm effleurage. Arm saw. Friction. 
frictioning the ischial tuberosity. Frictioning the Achilles tendon where it meets the gastrox. And this is done at a stretch. Hamstring tendons. Ilia tibial band. Tensor fascia latte. Acupressure point, gallbladder 30. Bladder 34, 36, bladder 60. Friction the head of the femur. You can do a, a quadricep stretch, heel to hip, optional. Shake, lift, rock. If they don't move when you rock them, or don't rock very well, then there's still some restrictions going on that you haven't released yet. Tuck into the underwear, down to the sacrum. Make sure the sacrum's exposed. Effleurage. Body weight down. The effleurage continually gets deeper and deeper. This is a kneading, the top of the hip, waist area. Kidneys are unprotected right in through here, so you're not going to be doing any deep movements in through there. Just like at the back of the knee. And kneading for the shoulders. Focusing on rhomboids, upper trapezius, infraspinatus right in here, teres. Deep longitudinal down the vertebrae. I'll go over the landmarks. T7's right here, T7 is here. I'm going to do a skin rolling for her. Shows how tight her fascia tissue and moves quite well. Doesn't seem to be many restrictions here. Where it is tight to skin roll will tell you where there are fascial restrictions, tight bands or problems, ischemia possibly going on. And there is a little bit going on right in through here at the lumbar vertebrae. Checking. Ringing. Flange. Friction. Force in the deep tissue moves. I'm frictioning the erector spinae group. And as you can see, it's a little stringy in through here. Telling us that there's a possibility of some vertebral subluxations. And I'm feeling that at the upper thoracic. This is around T6 and 7, 9, 10, 11. So 
So I've done all my petra sash moves. I'm going to move on into the more of the friction moves. And for this, I'm going to focus now on low back, frictioning across the iliac crest, across the sacrum, or on the side of the sacrum, sacral holes. Same thing for this side. Iliac crest, friction, and I'm looking for tight areas, tight bands of tissue, uh, soreness. And she would let me know if I ran across a sore or tight area, hopefully. Uh, but usually you can tell with your own hands if an area is tight. I'm pressing in direct pressure into the quadratus lumborum. Marlene, how does that feel? It feels good. Okay. Good. How about this side? A little sore? Okay. Good. The quadratus is sore. Chances are they do have some form of low back pain or tightness. I'm seeing a little bit of hyperemia right here. That's telling me that the circulation is not naturally getting there until I'm working on it. So I'm going to go up and focus on this area now. And this is rhomboid around T... Four. Work a bit on the arms. Lifting. Kind of a kneading move for the arms. Frictioning around the deltoids. And making sure to get the teres. And I'm going to lift the arm up. And I would not do this on someone elderly or that did not have full flexibility with their shoulder rotation movement and I don't know if you can see this but she's red right in here does this hurt at all no, not too much. No. would you like some tiger balm yes, okay I'm gonna get her some tiger balm okay I'm frictioning in some tiger balm into her ischemic area where the tissues are very tight and lacking circulation. And in most rooms, the tiger balm should be within reaching distance so you don't have to lose contact to go and get it. And a friction now, the levator scapula, which is also tight. Top of the scap infraspinatus, supraspinatus, lifting up on the shoulder just a bit to get deeper in there. Is this comfortable for you? Yeah, that's fine. Good. You would not use any of the heating liniments like the tiger balm, eucalyptus, or peppermint whenever you're using heat at the same time, such as the steam heat pads. Just trying to loosen up this area for her, giving them some therapy. Deep longitudinal down the erectors with my elbow, keeping my shoulder over the elbow as I move down. You do not want to slip on this move until you get this one down. You may want to guide with your hand like this. And the thinner a person is and the stringier the muscles are, the more you'll want to guide because the erectors may not be as thick. Arm saw.
also arm saw the hip. And do some vibration on the tensor fascia latte. People usually like that move. Okay, deep longitudinal. Keeping your shoulder over your elbow. This move is also done slow. So you always maintain control. And this side of her shoulder is not as tight as the other side. Pushing the top of the scapula, levator scap, rhomboids, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, upper trapezius, Deltoids, triceps, working into the rhomboids, and I'm also getting some uh, of the serratus anterior in here also. subscapularis it's deep within there you can get the subscap actually easier going in from the lateral scapula going in underneath it okay, okay I'd work this for a few more minutes to equalize the pressure and the work on both sides Does that feel okay yeah. And then bring the arm down where it's comfortable again. Going to end with some neck work. This would be longitudinal work up the trapezius. I'm also going to press one more time into gallbladder 21 and move the traps with this. Nice and loose. Since Marlene didn't give me any specific requests on extra time on shoulder, low back, I pretty much equalized the time with the low back work and the shoulder work. But if I found during the massage that one area was giving her more trouble than the other I would focus in on that area and maybe even go to the point of working a lot more on that and leaving the legs out or not spending as much time on the legs or the arms so each massage is going to be a little bit different friction at the neck if the person is not using a face cradle I would have them move their head back and forth and point to any tight muscles or tight areas that they may have. Now Marlene's pretty flexible. I didn't have to do any P and F stretches to her neck or her legs. But you may find that you'll have to add those in a lot of the times. Since I did do some, a lot of deep work on this shoulder, I am going to stretch this out one more time before we finish up. And on the back, the best way to do that is pull and pull. The ideal situation would be to do a P and F stretch from the front. So I am going to show you that one. So I'm going to finish up here. Pressure going down, squeeze and a rock. Would you like some alcohol to get any of the oil off? Yes. Yeah. Okay. In each of the rooms we do supply alcohol. Please don't spray it directly on them. He squirts into the hand and rub it in. And she, most of the oil has absorbed into her. I'm going to focus up in the shoulders and the neck for the alcohol. 
take a sheet. And let me quickly show you a couple of percussion moves. Hacking. Do not do kidney or back of knee eating. Cupping. Quacking. Tapping. All optional moves to end with. And making sure she moves well. Okay, I'm going to ask her to slowly turn over and face up for me, please. You may want to scoot down just a little bit. You can kind of push the bolster out of the way if you like. Okay, give yourself a nice stretch. Pull and rock. enough stretch for this area. Resist against my hand and breathe normally. You do this for six seconds, the resistance. Relax. Take a deep breath. Good. And we're going to do this right here. Resist up. This is for the pec. Breathe normal. Relax. Okay, and I'm going to repeat the process on the other side. Okay, resist up. Rhomboid again. And middle trapezius. And relax. Let's do one in this direction. Resist up this way. It's going to be for deltoids. And relax. What else is tight here? Do one right here. Resist up. And relax. Now, I'm going to do one for her levator scapula. I'm going to stretch it up nice and slow. You don't want to do this too fast. And this is her resistance point. And ask her to push back against my hands with 30% of her strength. And breathe normal. And relax. Take a deep breath. And you can see an increase in flexibility. One more time. And relax. Deep breath. Good. And how do you feel? Very good. good. Okay. We'll keep this feeling all week. And come back and see me next week. Okay, I will. Okay. And after this, I would leave, tell her to get up slowly, be sure to stretch out any area that felt like she needed stretching, and drink lots of water for the next couple of days.